Good morning. How are we doing today? Hopefully you're having a good week. I want to take an opportunity and show you how we move our round bales. This here little cart here I built. Built basically out of scrap. I did buy I did buy the winch for on it. It's a cool little winch. I've never had one like it before. It's kind of got a self-breaking system in here. It doesn't have the ratchets. The ratchet locking system like most of them do. But like my other bale mover, I have an axle in it out of that trailer that the neighbor gave me. And then these prongs here, they're bent prongs from whenever we were making wet hay. We bent a lot of prongs. So we saved them up and I put them in there. This here's kind of like a quadra, quad purpose machine. It has a lot of different uses. One of the uses that we use it for is naturally is putting round, round bales out to the horses. And we're going to do that here right now has our fence jumper on it already built into it and you'll see when we get over there i a lot of times going through gates is challenging with livestock you open the gate and try to drive through and they come out and, and with the horses that's kind of challenging process but we also use this here to move large square bales we can move two large square square bales at a time with it uh, however, we're not using as much hay as we used to, so we don't haven't used it for, for that purpose yet this year. Uh, another purpose that we use it for, if any of you seen uh, splitting the steer off the cow herd video, and I'll put a link up in the top here for you. Set four gates, four or five gates out in the pasture field and corral the animals out there. And, and oftentimes I'll do that by myself. In the steer cutting video, I have the whole family helping me. But most generally, it's me by myself splitting the uh, animals off the cow herd that we need for any you know if we're sending anything for for harvest or splitting bulls or whatever purpose we'll use this here to move gates it works excellent for moving gates we can throw i think i've had as many as 10 on there but most generally we only use four or five whenever we're corralling out in the field uh, when we're corralling out in the field i'll set up a temporary pen and I'll move the cows and split that one animal off the cow herd and then put them in that pen. And then another purpose that we just recently come up with with this is with the telephone poles is an eight foot telephone pole weighs about 200 to 250 pounds. They're extremely heavy, extremely difficult to move around, but they make great ends and corners for your fences. And we put them on there because we can lift them off the ground. I can just, I just back into them, roll them on, and we're good to go. But we'll show you how this thing works. But I got a handle right here. The cool thing with this winch is it automatically catches by itself. It's kind of an accidental buy for me. I don't remember where I got it. Or lower them spears down and we'll just back into that bale and crank it up and we'll go. We'll take this bale over and put it in with the cows and or in with the horses, I guess I should say. Back into that and load it up. Pretty simple. Got our bale loaded up and we'll take it over to the horses here. They do have a, a locking system in it here. Put this pin in here for going any long distance. We can lock that bale into place. We don't have to worry about losing it.
Yeah, Jack, he's hungry or he's saying hello. I don't know which. I don't speak donkey very well. Keep our gates locked. It's kind of acting like that one horse is in heat, but I hope not. I'd kind of like to have a baby out of her this year. One of the challenges that I've always had is coming in with the livestock is opening the gates and try to drive through by yourself. I'm sure any of you have livestock have experienced the same thing. One of the things that I've started doing, having our fence jumpers on our equipment, put a fence crossed right here. They won't come back out. They won't come back out, but we have our fence jumpers and stuff on our buggy and our hay mover and stuff so we don't have to drop the fences. Jack. What's up, buddy? Huh? You were saying hello a minute ago. What's your problem today? Hey, buddy. This is Jack. He's a big baby. He's probably one of the quietest Jacks I've ever seen. I think I might get around him and break him, saddle break him. He is so quiet and nice and easy to be around. He's not ignorant like most jacks that I've been around. It's Jack. Let's go get this hay in so he doesn't starve to death. But he's he's not starving by any means. He's got a little fat on his neck, which I don't care for much. We cut the strings off. Mares are not quite as friendly. That's okay, we don't ride our mares. Of course, this is not my cup of tea when it comes to riding. It's my own personal opinion, I guess. I'd rather ride a mule or a donkey for that matter. I understand them better. Tell folks, as I tell folks, with, to explain the difference between a horse and a mule. Mules are a lot smarter than horses, and they get that from the donkey. Extremely smart animals, and they're usually a little bit safer when it comes to trail riding. We ride a lot of cross country, or well, that's what we enjoy riding doing. If we can, we'll ride cross country and. When I was riding horses, I used to get into some pretty big messes, and I'm not saying there isn't good horses out there, because there is. There's horses out there that are better than mules, for that matter, but I'd rather ride ride a mule. I, can, I understand them better. Well, most generally with the horses, we don't roll the hay out because they have a tendency to waste a lot. Every time we put a bale out, we move the round bale ring. This here was the last bale. We actually started clear over there. The horses were put on hay probably first week in January. We started clear over there with our round barrel ring and we worked worked around here. That's how we handle round bales, feeding the horses. This here's a Pasifino. She's an older mare. She's got a, a messed up hip. She's never was saddle broke. 
You can see on the back side, this one side, I think her, the pin bone or the hip bone was busted at one time when she was a baby. She's always been a brood mare. She's probably my favorite mare out of the bunch. This black and white one's the one that tried to kill me. And she probably shouldn't be here now, but. And then we have buttermilk. She's, she's a walking horse. And then we bought that red horse as a quarter horse, but I'm not so sure she's a quarter horse. I would say, I'd be more apt to say she's a quarter, uh, standard bred. Any of you guys, any of the horse folks watching this, give me your opinion what you think this horse here is. I, I believe she's a standard bred. She's just not wide enough to be a quarter horse. But she's a nice quiet mare. She's probably my second favorite mare of the bunch. These walking horses are a little bit, a little bit hot for me, but they should make some decent babies. Okay, friends, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. We sure appreciate it. About 76% of our viewers that we have are not subscribed. So if you're having trouble subscribing to the channel, let me know. I try and walk you through the process. It really helps us out in the algorithms for the YouTube and, and how the search engines work as far as YouTube showing our videos in a search. So if you would, please subscribe. We could use the support. Until next time, have a good one. So long.